Kumu. I'm a Kenyan, I'm a broadcast journalist, and um, my story about this book when I am a grandpa is that I had never actually met Kimani in the flesh, but I received a phone call. Do you want me to tell the true story sure, or the embedded sure, sure. <laughs> uh, truth is essential? Uh, so, but yeah, I, I tend to tell the truth at most times, which annoys people. Um, I received this phone call, and uh, Kimani said, We haven't met, but obviously I've tracked your career for some time, and I'm aware of your existence. I've written a book. Would you be interested in reading it? And he said to me that the book had been written as a doctoral thesis guided by our own very great Professor Ngugi Wadiongo. And therefore, I used my pea brain to say, bing, this is a good trip to be on, <laughs> Ngugi Wadiongo. And I said, um, what went wrong? So Kimani said um, he had found a, a group, an American company called Recorded Books. And Recorded Books had sent him the voices of two very proficient African-American, I presume they were actors. And he showed me the sample, and you can imagine what was happening. They could say, the railway crawled down at a curve, the flamingos were going, and then they sang a song called Malaika. Malaika, I compared them Malaika. So um, one thing that Kimani decided is that he didn't want his book read in such fashion. So he wanted to give it a sort of native touch. So I said, well, I'm a native. I've been a native for a long time. <laughs> so I read a little bit, and I, uh, I sent it off. And then I sent my CV, and the people that recorded books said, uh, uh, Mr. Sibi Okumu, from your CV, it's eminently clear that you are more than qualified for this job, so get reading. So being qualified for the job meant that we had to find a recording studio, record the book, and we're basically working at the rate of 10 pages per hour. Uh, when I went in, it, it seemed as if uh, it would be like a piece of cake, because normally I sort of narrate documentaries, you know, the, the Rift Valleys, 2,000 miles high. But I was saying that when I get really old, what I'm going to sell at Sotheby's uh, for a great price is the original copy of all the things that, uh, all the different voices that I, I had to adopt. Uh, and all the pink and the yellow was just so that when I got, there's Babu, there's Raju, there's Griju, there's Bumbu. But um, um, I think um, this is the point really to say a very uh, big thank you to Kimani, because after all, in this community, we are an artists, and I think that what Kimani has done for me uh, as, a, uh, as a sprightly 63-year-old is that um, what Kimani has done is fixed my legacy for life. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, 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 I urge you... I urge you to go and, and read the book. You don't necessarily have to. But you see, the thing is, if you're, you know, people will say, we saw this character reading the news, we saw him with a walk-on part in The Constant Gardener. All these things are very sort of impressive. But in these 342 pages, I've taken on at least, at the very minimum, at the very minimum, I've taken on at least 12 different accents because that's how these things are done. So as McDonald, I had a go at being Scottish. Uh, some some uh, fellow, I had some sort of European DC. It was an actor's consummate ego trip. You know what I'm saying? So every, and the, and the really good bit, uh, you can see that I'm a performer in my spare time. Um, what, shall we find uh, the bit where we have to do it? This will, this will shock. Um, this is the, 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 I got to a point, I sang Malaika in Kiswahili, I sang the song that you've just got, had, and what we did is that, um, because there's a few Kikuyu phrases in there, uh, Kimani came to my house of an afternoon, 
and we taped all the segments that were in Kikuyu so that he was there with another of my writer friends who can't be here tonight, Kinyanjui Kombani. So we sat there over an afternoon and they read a bit and tried to make it uh, uh, as authentically Kikuyu as possible. <laughs> now, Kikuyu is not only Rwanda, it's in the Mnyaland. So this was a, a completely different set of vowels to get around. Where is it? Right at the end, the song hit when they got there. So when we, when we got to page um, 272, and I'll be, I'll be over in five minutes, I've bored you stiff. We had to, um, I don't know, uh, we got to this, um, uh, we got to this segment, which I really enjoyed, because when I did it properly, which I'm not doing now, so um, it went something like this. The Reverend was beside himself with happiness. He gave all of the women hearty hugs to receive them in Christ's communion. He said, each hug lasting longer than the previous one. The assembled women then broke into a song that Turnbull joined in with an alloyed joy. This is probably the last time I've been allowed to be Kikuyu and get away with it without the staff. Why be Japan, you know? So, um, uh, that was a bit of a bit of how silly we are with our tribal pre reflections. And then I went on to say, Lord, light my way. I'm pursued by impenetrable darkness. Ahead lie shadows darker than the rocks where my enemies lurk. So, um, thank you, brother, for setting me up for life. Thank you. It's a pleasure. It's my pleasure. Thank you.